What up, guys? This is Chivo Guys. Back here again with another achievement guide. Today, we're going to be focusing on 50 years. This game just got updated with an additional 1,000 gamer score, totaling up for 2,000 gamer score. Now, in terms of the base 1,000 gamer score, you have to play through the game at least one time, which takes about 15 minutes if you know what you're doing. Now, in terms of the latest achievements, it would require you to play a second playthrough. That would mean that if you don't have any of the achievements, you could get the full 2,000 gamer score in just about 30 minutes with two playthroughs. On top of that, the game is only $4.99. The game is published by Zitalon and it is developed by Alexander Globokin. Now if you don't have any of the achievements yet, you can actually use this guide to get the full 2000 gamer score. If you already have the base 1000 gamer score, you can use this guide to get the second 1000 gamer score. So first and foremost, I want to start off by pulling up the achievements. The brand new achievements basically require you to get your second upgrade in each of the upgrade categories versus the base 1000 gamer score had required us to get at least one upgrade in each of the upgrade categories. So basically what we need to do is get the second upgrade in each of those categories and we'll have all of the achievements. Now while you're playing the game, sometimes after a battle, you'll get an opportunity to choose a new belief or upgrade. This is where you get the achievements at. For instance, the first belief or upgrade category is the Pantheon of Fat Chickens. Now, in my experience, when I tried to go for the additional 1000 gamer score, I found that my achievements weren't popping. And this is because when I played the game, I had already got that second upgrade. And if the game already thinks that you've gotten that upgrade, it thinks that the achievement has already triggered, so the achievement trigger will not activate. I ended up persisting all the way to the end. I completed the full game all 50 years. By the end of the game, I ended up getting my second upgrade in three of the five belief categories, and none of the achievements popped. So, what I had to do to get the achievements to start working is I was forced to go into the game settings and delete my save data. To do this, you need to press the guide button, and then you need to press the menu button over the game. And what you want to do is go down to manage game and add-ons. But first, you want to force close the game. So close it, and then go to manage game and add-ons. Then you want to go to save data. You want to click your profile and click delete everywhere. After that, we're going to go to 50 years and start it back up. And at this point, your achievements should start working again. So, ultimately, when you play the game, you can only get 7 upgrades, which unfortunately is not enough to get it all in one playthrough, being that we need to get 10 upgrade opportunities, because we have 5 different upgrade categories and we need the second upgrade in each of those, for a total of 10 upgrades. So again, if you're starting from scratch, you can do this with 2 playthroughs total. Now, if you already have the base 1000 gamer score, unfortunately, you're probably still going to have to do two playthroughs. Personally, that's what I had to do, but that's because I had to start from scratch with the save data. I also want to point out that the save data doesn't really matter that much anyway, just because ultimately when you beat the game, nothing carries over. You just start the game over again. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to be running you guys through one and a half playthroughs so we can get the brand new five achievements. Okay, so we're going to start off with starting up a new game and we want to click next until we get to the Greeks. The advantage of playing as the Greeks is that you start off with the Minotaur Maze. The Minotaur Maze enables you to hire Minotaurs right away. You do need 2000 coins though, so we're not going to do it right away. If you're not familiar with the game yet, basically what we want to do is start off by hiring some peasants. You want to hire three peasants and then just keep advancing the year. Once you get to year three, you want to hire another peasant, advance a year. Then we want to finally hire a swordsman. You're going to notice that you do not have enough food, so you're going to have to create a chicken farm. Once you do that, you're going to end the year, then you're going to have exactly 600 coins and you want to hire your first swordsman. At that point, you're going to end up in your first fight. All you have to do is press fight and you should win. Alright, on to year 6. So again, we want to focus on stacking up our peasants, but ultimately nothing is more important than being able to protect yourself and having a big army. So, we're going to go ahead and hire a second swordsman. This is going to put us into our next fight, and we're just going to press fight. At this point, you should be on year 8. You should have 6 peasants and 2 swordsmen. We're just going to click OK. If you haven't got it yet, you do need to go to a den to get one of the achievements in the base 1000 gamer score. You want to hire a peasant, advance a year, and then we need to buy another chicken farm and buy another peasant. And we're going to press OK. 
Just keep hiring peasants whenever you can. At first, you really don't need more than two swordsmen, at least, you know, within the first 10 years or so. Now, once you max out on the amount of people that you can hire, each of those characters have a building related to them. And if you expand or build a building, it will enable you to hire more of that character. For instance, I want to be able to hire more peasants. So I'm going to construct a building and we're going to purchase a town hall. Now I'm going to be able to hire up to 20 peasants. Now the advantage of hiring peasants is that each time you have a peasant, they make 100 coins per year. You can see this at the top of the screen in the middle. It shows you how much money you make every year in gray below your actual coins. So right now, I make 1500 coins a year because I have 15 peasants. So that's why I'm focusing on expanding the peasants. I think in year 14 is where I finally hired a third swordsman. Just to be safe, I'd maybe hire the third swordsman maybe a year before that, around year 13 or so. Now, as you can see, right now I have about 17 peasants and 3 swordsmen. 3 swordsmen appears to be enough to be able to make my way through these fights. Just know that if you lose in a fight, you will have to start the game over again. Which isn't that big of a deal, but it does, you know, lose some time. Now, these are the five upgrade categories. We need to get two upgrades in each of these categories to get all of the new achievements. So we're going to start off with the Pantheon of the Fat Chickens category, and I got my first upgrade in that category or belief. So now we're just going to continue playing through the game, and once I get another upgrade opportunity, I can get my second upgrade in that category, and that will trigger the first of the brand new achievements. So we're gonna make our way through this fight. As you can see, I hired my first Minotaur, just because as you can see, I'm up to making 2,000 coins per year. Next, I upgraded the barracks, which allows you to hire more swordsmen. Now I'm up to six swordsmen and a minotaur. So right now, I'm pretty much defeating everybody pretty easily. Again, priority number one is making sure that your army is strong enough. And then the second priority would be um, getting a lot of peasants or hiring a lot of peasants, which may require you to, you know, build a few town halls. Now here, I got my second upgrade opportunity. I got my second upgrade in the Pantheon of Fat Chickens, and that triggered the achievement for doing so. That is worth 200 gamer score. We have four achievements left for the other four upgrade or believe categories. Now I'm up to 23 peasants, but I need to create a chicken farm. Eventually, once you have enough people, you basically won't have enough food to feed those people, and you need to create chicken farms. Once you create chicken farms, it will enable you to hire more people. Other than that, I'm maxed out on the peasants, so let's see the price on the town hall. I can afford it, being that I'm making a lot of money. It was 3,000 coins, but now I can hire up to 35 peasants. If I can max that out, I'll be up to making 3,500 coins per year, which pretty much enables you to hire a lot of people per turn. We're already up to 34, but I maxed out on my food, so again, we have to make another chicken farm, and that will enable me to max out at 37 peasants. Next, we have another fight. However, this time, the CPU has introduced stronger enemies. I think they're knights. And so what we need to do is upgrade our army because it's not as strong as it used to be, at least compared to what the CPU is throwing at us now. So we're going to hire a bunch of swordsmen. That's six swordsmen, and that's going to take all of my money for now. Hopefully, we'll be able to knock out these two minotaurs. I think without my minotaur, I probably would have lost that battle. Now we have our third upgrade opportunity. I'm going to upgrade that, which is the Legends of the Miner's Belief. Next, we're on to year 26. Now it appears that I have all of my characters maxed out, my swordsmen and my peasants. I'm going to upgrade the barracks so I can hire a few more swordsmen, but I'm running out of food, so I'm going to need to create another chicken farm. And now I'm out of coins, so we're going to end the year. And now we are in another battle. This one appears to be really easy. And it looks like we didn't even have any losses, so that's good. And we have 4,500 coins. Um, I want to try to hire another Minotaur, so I'm going to create another Minotaur maze. It will enable you to hire a second Minotaur. However, that's 4,000 coins to be able to upgrade that Minotaur maze. And then you have to spend another 2,000 coins to hire the Minotaur. So it's a 6,000 coin investment. But once you're up to making 4,000 coins per year or per turn, it really opens up the game and enables you to get a lot of upgrades and build up your army pretty large. As you can see, we're pretty much owning everybody in all of the battles. And next, I'm going to create another town hall. 
This will enable me to hire even more peasants up to 49. Let's see, end the year and we're going to max that out at 49. However, I need to build another farm. So we went ahead and built another chicken farm, maxed out the peasants at 50. We have 12 swordsmen and two minotaurs. The minotaurs are beast mode. They pretty much wipe out all of the enemies right away. But even though they have a strong attack, they can die. For instance, they just wiped out one of my minotaurs right there. So I'm going to have to repurchase him, which is a 2,000 coin investment. Now I have my fourth upgrade opportunity. I'm going to get my second upgrade in the Legends of Miners belief. And that's going to trigger the Legends of Miners 2 achievement worth another 200 gamer score. That puts us at 2 out of 5 in terms of the new achievements. So next I want to build a stable. This is going to enable us to hire knights. They are a bit stronger compared to the swordsmen, but at first you can only hire 3 of them. And they're also more expensive, but they do a lot more damage, so they're definitely worth it. They're 1000 coins per piece, so 400 more coins compared to a swordsman. So we're going to max that out at 3 knights. We're maxed out at 50 peasants and 12 swordsmen as well. So I decided I'm going to upgrade the barracks. That way I can hire some more swordsmen. Now we can hire up to 16 swordsmen. Alright, so let's go ahead and make sure everything is maxed out. 16 swordsmen, 3 knights, 2 minotaurs, 51 peasants. We're going to upgrade the stable so that we can hire up to 6 knights now. And now we have a pretty good army going for us. We're going to create another chicken farm because... Because we know the game's going to tell us that we need some more food soon. Next, I'm going to create another stable or upgrade the stable. Now we can hire up to 9 knights. And I think it's about time we upgrade our town hall again. However, it's really expensive. I think it's just a little over 10,000 coins now for the latest town hall update. So we're going to end the year and start this fight. As you can see, the CPU has a much larger army now. But they don't have really strong enemies, it's just a large army, kind of just filled with swordsmen. And eventually they'll have archers too, but as long as you have some knights and those two minotaurs, you'll pretty much wipe out all of your enemies pretty quickly. So yeah, you don't need to follow along exactly, but just try to make sure that your numbers are kind of close to mine in terms of what your army looks like. Again, it looks like I'm on year 37 with 53 peasants, 20 swordsmen, 9 knights, and 2 minotaurs. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, you can only get up to 7 upgrades in a playthrough, meaning that you get pretty close to getting your 4th achievement, but there aren't enough upgrades to do so. So once we get our 3rd achievement, we're going to just start the game over again, which is at about year 44. There's no need to complete the last 6 years, because again, there aren't enough upgrade opportunities at the end of the game. Now, I just invested in a bigger town hall, so now I was able to hire up to 63 peasants, which means which means I'm making 6,300 coins a year or per turn off my peasants. On top of that, I think it's boosted even more because of some of the beliefs or upgrades that we chose. But yeah, so basically we're going to stick around for the next two upgrades, and once we upgrade the next belief category twice, we're going to go ahead and quit the game. It's going to be at year 44. We should be getting our next upgrades shortly. So I just upgraded the stable so I could hire up to 15 knights. It's going to give you a warning saying that this is going to be a tough year. This is because you end up fighting those hydras right there. But as long as you have two minotaurs, you should be fine. Alright, so let's see. We're at 15 knights, 20 swordsmen and two minotaurs that's a pretty good army as you can see i'm still wiping out most of the cpus for instance on that battle i only lost one night so that's not too bad in terms of the damage that i took from that fight I'm gonna have to upgrade the farm once again and now i'm at 65 peasants I'm going to upgrade the barracks now i can hire up to 24 swordsmen and we're going to end the year again max out the swordsmen and let's see we're going to do the barracks just one more time. You can never have enough swordsmen. So let's go uh, max that out to 28. But first we need another chicken farm. Okay, sweet. Everything looks good. Now we're going to advance to year 44. And we should be good to go. Alright, so fight. That army was actually pretty small. I defeated them really easily. Should have been a little harder considering we're at the end of the game. Anyhow, choose your second upgrade 
and you're going to unlock the achievement called Legends of the Forest 2 for getting your second belief upgrade in the Legends of Forest category. Now, as I mentioned before, there's only one more upgrade opportunity in the rest of the game, so you will not be able to unlock any other achievements. So we're gonna go ahead and just start the game over again. You're going to select the Greeks, and this time we don't need to play until year 44. We just need to play far enough to get four upgrades, which will happen by year 36. Now, this should only take about 10 minutes or so. So you guys kind of know the drill. Again, we wanna focus on building up our peasants, that's one of our main priorities, but never more important than making sure that you have a strong enough army to be able to proceed through the game. So make sure that you hire at least one swordsman so that if you do get in a fight, you can go ahead and win it. Worst case scenario, if you end up in a fight and you don't have a swordsman, you can call on your people to fight, um, which basically enables your peasants to fight for you. You just have to call on the militiamen. So we're on to our next battle. Once you get the hang of it and you understand how the game works, you can really start to zoom through it. So right now I'm at seven peasants, two swordsmen, and I need more money. So we're gonna go ahead and advance a year. I ended up in another fight. We're going to press okay. And now we're going to hire some more peasants, but it says that we need more food. So we're going to build a chicken farm and then we can hire one more peasant and then we'll go ahead and advance a year so we can hire one swordsman. That's 600 coins. At this point, you should have three swordsmen or so. You might have two, but try to get three as soon as possible. That way you don't end up dying on accident. And now we can go ahead and hire one more peasant. Fight. And at this point, we're going to get close to starting to be able to expand the amount of peasants that we can hire via building a town hall. But first, it says that we need to build another farm. Now we have maxed out on the peasants and swordsmen, and we're up to making 1,000 coins per turn. We're going to go ahead and end the year, and now that I have over 1,200 coins, I can go ahead and build a town hall. This is going to enable me to hire more peasants once again. So hire as many as you can. Go ahead and end the year, and we're going to keep on hiring peasants. Eventually, you're going to need some more food, so you'll have to build another chicken farm. I just did that but I ran out of money, so I'm going to advance a year. We're going to make our way through this fight. Four versus two, they had no chance. Now we have our first upgrade opportunity at year 16. That's going to be our first upgrade in the Temple of Defenders belief category. So we're gonna go ahead and hire some more peasants and we're going to construct another farm and end the year. Now we're going to make sure that we're maxed out on everything. I think we're getting close to finally being able to hire a Minotaur. I want to get up to making um, near 2,000 coins per year before I do that though. Just so that we can pay off our Minotaur in one year. Let's see here. Yeah, we're going to max out our peasants first. But first it says we need more food. So we're going to buy a chicken farm once again. Now I'm maxed out at peasants. 20 peasants total. We can finally hire a Minotaur. So now I have 6 swordsmen. I have two more than the max, and that's because of the belief or the upgrade that we just purchased. And next I'm going to build another town hall. This is going to enable me to hire up to 30 peasants. We're going to go ahead and advance our way through this fight. Now that we have the Minotaur, we're going to be pretty much wiping out our enemies pretty easily. And we're going to hire some more peasants. It's going to say not enough food, make another chicken farm, end the year. Now that we have some more money, we're going to hire some more peasants. We can hire up to 30 now. We just needed to build a farm so that we can feed our people. We're going to advance through our next fight. We should be getting close to our second upgrade opportunity, enabling us to get our fourth achievement. The fourth achievement of the new achievements. That's going to unlock an achievement worth 200 gamer score called Temple of Defenders 2 for picking your second faith skill in the Temple of Defenders category. At this point, we have four of the five new achievements. All we need to do is get two more upgrade opportunities. We'll be doing this in the next 12 years. By year 36, you should have your final achievement. So again, first priority is making sure that we have a strong army. Second priority is making sure that we build up those peasants so we can make as much money possible per turn. All right, next we're going to just make sure that we have everything maxed out. I can hire two more swordsmen, so let's just go ahead and do that. And I can afford to create another barracks, so I'm going to upgrade the barracks. And now I can hire up to 12 swordsmen. 
All right, that's going to take care of those Minotaurs. You want to make sure that you go into that year 25 battle with at least one Minotaur. Otherwise, there's a good chance you may end up losing that battle. All right, we're going to go into this next one. It's against two knights, but it's only three enemies total, so not too hard for that one. And next, we're going to construct a building, and we're going to try to make a new town hall. However, we can't afford it quite yet, so we're going to advance one more year. After this battle, we should be able to afford our next upgrade on the town hall, but we're also going to get our next upgrade opportunity. You want to make sure to choose the first upgrade in the equality of church category. At this point, all we need is one more upgrade and we will get our final achievement. Again, our next upgrade opportunity will come at year 36. That will enable us to get our final achievement. But for now, we're just going to focus on expanding our peasants and making sure that we have a strong army because last thing we want to do is lose and have to restart at the beginning. So let's see where we're at. We're at about 40 peasants, 12 swordsmen, one minotaur. We're going to go ahead and upgrade our barracks so that we can hire up to 16 swordsmen. We're going to press fight. Now we're going to start fighting knights. So, so we're going to want to make sure that we're hiring stronger personnel. Maybe start hiring some knights soon, which would require us to build a stable. But first, I'm going to build up my swordsmen. We have to build a chicken farm because we have to be able to feed everybody. We'll go ahead and build that stable, advance one year. That way we have enough money to max out and hire three knights. As long as you have a few knights and that minotaur, you should be good. Eventually, we're going to work on um, hiring our second minotaur, but it's going to require us to upgrade or build the uh, second Minotaur maze. Let's see. I think we might have enough. 4,000 gold. Let's go ahead and do it. We don't have enough to actually hire the second one yet though. So we have to advance one year. And after this battle, we should be able to afford our second Minotaur. All right. Perfect. So now we have two Minotaurs, three Knights, 16 Swordsmen, and a bunch of Peasants. We're going to upgrade our Swordsmen or our Barracks so that we can hire more Swordsmen. We're going to need to create another chicken farm though because again, these people are hungry. At this point, it's year 35 and we're only one year away from getting our next upgrade opportunity which is going to enable us to get our final achievement giving us our full 2000 gamer score. So just make sure that you win that battle and then you want to get your second upgrade in the equality of church skill category and that's going to unlock the equality church 2 achievement worth your final 200 gamer score. At this point, you guys should have your full 2,000 gamer score for the game. If you guys have really been enjoying all of these 2,000 gamer score games, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. Other than that, I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers. We just hit 21 patrons. I'd like to give a special shout out to everybody in the biggest fan club, including TimG84, AOJ, Blackbird, Kegger101 and NL the Dude. As always, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.